is, how about this? Islam says, live in the present. Okay? Remember that hadith where the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that in the morning do not wait for the evening, and when in the evening do not wait for the morning? You all remember, are aware of that, of that hadith. They say that this is one of the most optimistic statements that were made by the Prophet, peace be upon him. And what makes it optimistic? What do you think makes it optimistic? What part of the hadith is, is showing optimism? You don't like to share, do you? Huh? Yeah, doesn't it? On the surface, it sounds very pessimistic. In the morning, don't wait for the evening, don't expect to live that long, and in the evening, don't wait to, do not expect to live. So it does sound very pessimistic, but there is optimism in there. Hmm? Exactly. In the morning, what do you have? The morning. So live the morning to its fullest. Don't say, oh, I will wait till the evening. Don't do that. Live the morning to its fullest. And in the evening, what do you do? Live the evening to its fullest. And then the next morning comes, live it to its fullest. And the next evening, live it to its fullest. The idea is about live in the present. Remember what we said about anxiety and, and grief? Is that we become captives of our memories. What is really left of yesterday? What is left? Memories. What is there about tomorrow? Imagination. Wallahi, there is nothing about tomorrow but our own imagination. So it said that we become captives of our memories or we become prisoners of our imagination. And we lose out on living today. So it said, you know what? Yes, you are right. Maybe the future is this. But hey, what about, why don't we enjoy the moment right now? Why don't we live in the present? And subhanAllah, that is why Islam, when Islam says that live the present, it means that be optimistic. You know, subhanAllah, in the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Al-fa'lu husnul khuluq, wa shu'mu su'ul khuluq. Being an optimist is the best of character. And being a pessimist is the worst of character. Can you imagine this? Now he said that optimism is about, is being part, it's about, it's, about, it's part of being a good Muslim. That to be an optimist. And he said, and the worst type of character is to be a pessimist. And by the way, the pessimist may be right. The pessimist may be right. Imagine this. At 11 o'clock, a group of people said, why don't we go and eat at that restaurant? And the pessimist said, it's closed. It will take us an hour to get there. And by the time we get there, it will be closed. Right? So they said, well, why don't we just try it anyways? So throughout the trip, what is the pessimist saying? It will be, no, be closed. It will be closed. It will be closed. It will be closed. We get there and what happens? It's closed. We're going back and what is he saying? I told you so. I told you so. I told you so. But see, what he forgot is this. That along the trip, the optimists were enjoying the journey. He was right at the end. But in the meantime, everybody else enjoyed the journey. And what does he do? He robbed his own self of that part. At the end of the journey, he was right. But guess what? He was right at the end, but he also robbed himself from the joy that took place in that journey. Do you know any people like that? Some people are absolutely pessimist. And by the way, if you are a pessimist, and your friends have not told you, I am telling you right now, that you are not fun to be around. <laughs> Wallahi, I kid you not. Pessimist people are not fun to be around. And for some reason, we live at a time where, you know what? There is just nothing. Um, um, uh, we, we, we feed into each other uh, negative emotions. I mean, imagine this. We wake up in the morning, and what is the first thing that we do? We complain, I had nightmares last night. Oh, my back hurts. Oh, I didn't get enough sleep. Oh, I'm feeling so... It's, 
Imagine, you wake up in the morning, and what is the very first thing that you do? We start complaining. And then we complain about the coffee not being fresh. And then we complain about traffic being bad, or people being rude. And then you complain about how your boss treated you, or how the customers reacted to you. And then you come back home and your wife or husband asks, how was your day? And say, pooh, don't even get me started, right? <laughs> okay. So it's just one complaint leading to another complaint, leading to another complaint. Well, what does your day look like at the end of the day? Okay. So we feed into each other when it comes to things like that. But you know what the Prophet said? Enjoy every single minute of it. What is the first thing that he would say in the morning? Alhamdulillah, who has given me my soul back? Meaning that life in itself is a gift, enjoy it. Can you imagine? Life in itself is a gift, enjoy it. Alhamdulillah, alladhi radda ilayya ruhi wa adhina li fi dhikr. He said, all praise is due to Allah who has given me my soul back and he has permitted me to make a mention of him again over and over. An absolute, absolute uh, optimism. You wake up in the day and say, thank God I'm alive. Thank God I am alive. Inshallah, today will be a beautiful day. Uh, it is quoted that in the Ahya of Imam Ghazali, that Ibrahim alayhi salam would wake up every morning and he would make a prayer and say, Allahumma hadha khalqun jadeed. He said, oh Allah, today is a new creation. Oh Allah, give me the best of it. And save me from the worst that is in today's creation. Meaning that today is this new, is this new day. So the idea of living in the present, by making sure that your attitude towards the future is an expression of that Islamic teaching which is of optimism. I think I told you the story of the, um, of the group of sociologists who wanted to teach optimism, to see that if optimism is, is, uh, can be taught or not. So they said, let's get them at a young age. And what they did is that they went to a school and they went to the fourth grade. And they said, give us the most optimist you have and the most pessimist that you have. So they bought, um, they bought a girl and a boy, a girl representing optimism and the boy representing all the pessimists. One said, what is it about this boy? He said, man, this boy, nothing ever pleases him. He's always mad, he's always sad, he's always angry, and he's just always depressed. And this girl, no matter what you tell her, she's always happy and giggly and what have you. So they took the boy and they put him in a room full of toys and video games and Xbox and everything. And they said, you have an hour, enjoy yourself. They take the girl, and they put her in a room full of horse manure up to her neck. And they said, girl, you have a good time. <laughs> they come back in an hour, and they see the boy sitting exactly where they left him all upset and depressed and angry. And they came in and they said, what happened? He said, look around. Look at all these toys. Who has time to play with all these toys? <laughs> so the idiot chose not to play with any of them because he could not play with all of them. <laughs> they went to the girl, opened the door, and the girl is swimming. She's going in and out of the horse manure, in and out. And, and they said, what are you doing? She said, are you kidding me? With all this evidence, there's got to be a pony somewhere around here. <laughs> Okay. Now, the story is, is, is a bit childish, but there is a lot of truth in it, and that is, it's not our conditions, but rather it is our decisions. It is not about what happens to us, but it is about how do we react to what is happening to us. Life is not determined by what it throws at us, but rather it is by the way that we react to what has been thrown at us. Does that make sense? Okay. So now the point is, live in the present. Be optimistic. Look for alternative thoughts. And you have got to relax. And you have got to modify your anxiety so that it does not cripple you so that it does not paralyze you, so that you do not miss out on the joys of, on the joys of life.